Hey guys, it's Robin R's Island Crafts and welcome to my craft room. If you've watched one of my recent Whip It Wednesdays, you may remember seeing this adorable little purple pouch and inside it came with a matching mask. And we all thought the idea of putting a mask in a pouch was a great idea so you'd always have an emergency mask with you. It may not be your go-to all the time. You may just need to have a backup that you might want to hang from your purse or backpack or keep in your car. And I thought today we would go ahead and make one of these. So this was the one that was sent to me and this is the little prototype I played with today. Now, as you may be able to notice, it's a little bit bigger in all different directions and it just makes it a little bit easier to fit the mask in. Now, while this one is pretty good for an adult, I can fold up my mask and squeeze it in there, no problem. But if you're giving it to a child or you wanna make one, you know, school's starting up pretty soon and a lot of places the kids are still going back to school. So you might wanna keep some extra mask attached to their backpack for them. This they can easily roll up, because even little kids can roll up things like a burrito and fit it in here and get it all zipped up nice and tight. It's also a nicer size for us adults to make it a little bit easier for us to get access to things too. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you how I made this. If you hang out to the end, I'm gonna show you a couple other options also that might work a little bit better for you and your kids for storing your mask. But I thought this one was really fun, so I just had to make some, right? Now I have several videos about actually sewing the zippers into some pouches. So at the end of this video, go ahead and check the little I card up there in the corner and I'll put some videos up there for you guys. So if you've never sewn in a zipper, you can go ahead and see step by step and watch it being done. Today, we're just gonna go ahead and talk about it and I'm not gonna be taking you over to the sewing machine to show you each individual step. So for this pouch, we're gonna go ahead and get ourselves a zipper. We want it to be about eight or nine inches long. You can have it the exact size and have it about six and a half, seven inches, but the way we're gonna stitch this pouch together, and I will take you over to the sewing machine to show you that part, because I don't think we've done anything like this before in the past. Having a longer zipper is just gonna make it a little bit easier to do one of the steps that we have to do. Or you can just totally skip that step if you want. Now my outer fabric is six and a half by five inches. I'm gonna put all these measurements down below in the drop box for you guys, so in case you don't wanna sit down and write them down. I am using some lightweight interfacing. As you can see, I didn't have a large enough piece that I just went ahead and put some scraps on it. Fusible fleece would work really well also, or you can go ahead and use some quilt batting and give it a little bit of quilting. I did test one out with a little bit of quilting and I found that it's just the batting, even though I use very thin batting, it just made this small pouch just a little bit too thick for me. So I did like the lightweight interfacing. The fabric I'm using is a little bit firmer than a basic lightweight cotton. It has a little bit more strength to it, I believe. If you're using something like denim or corduroy or leather or vinyl, you won't need to have to worry about interfacing it or using any type of stiffening like batting or the fusible fleece. This piece here is cut two and a half by five inches. This is gonna be the two tabs that we need to have for both ends on our pouch. Now I used my outer fabric on this green one that we're gonna do, and on this one I used my inner fabric. So you can use any way you want. If you don't have this, you can go ahead and get a piece of ribbon that's about three quarters of an inch to an inch. Maybe you can even go down to a half an inch if you want. I like using the fabric because it's just a little bit sturdier, so if it's gonna get repetitive use, it's really kind of good for the kids. Now my lining fabrics are cut three and a half by five inches. We do have two of those because when we do our fabric for the outside, we're gonna go ahead and just use one piece like this, but we want two pieces of our lining so that we're gonna be able to turn it and have no raw seams. I also have this inch swivel hook that's just gonna allow us to go ahead and clip it to our backpacks or whatever, just like on this one and on this one. Now, if you have a little toggle, little doodad thing, you can hook it onto the zipper here. I have this one that's like a coat hanger that I'm gonna go ahead and use for mine. I'm sorry, my swivel hook is only a half an inch. It's not an inch. I over-exaggerated. You just need something small so that it's going to be able to fit onto this once we get it all folded and stitched. You could use a larger one if you have one. It's just gonna leave a little bit extra. It'll be a little bit wiggle room right here on the side. So a half an inch one will work perfectly. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take, these are my little tabs on the end. I wanna fold this to the center, just like if we were gonna be making handles for a bag. And I'm gonna give that a press. 
and I want to have that center seam. So then at that point, I can go ahead and just bring both of these pieces in and fold it up because then we're going to do stitching down both sides. Let me show you what that looks like after I get it pressed. Okay, so I went ahead and I folded it in half and gave it a good press. I brought both sides in, gave it another press. So you could fold these two together and give it a nice good steam. I'm going to take and top stitch about an eighth of an inch down the side of each of these long sides. And here is my strip. Now a lot of times when you see patterns for this type of thing where you have the little strip that you fold over to make handles, and one of the things they'll do is they'll say cut two, two and a half inch squares and then do all that, but it's I find it so much easier if you just double it up and sew them both at the same time. It's easier when you're pressing it with the iron and it's easier when you're top stitching and then just cut it in half. So what I do is I fold one over and once again, about an eighth of an inch from the end, I just go ahead and stitch that closed. This is gonna go at the back half of it. Then I put my little swivel hook on the other one. Decide which one you want to be the top, which one you want to be the inside. Once again, right about an eighth of an inch, I just go ahead and stitch on that just to hold it in place. And then I leave this next to me on the sewing machine so hopefully I don't forget to put it in. I'm notorious for forgetting to put these little tidbits in, but we're gonna try to remember today. So let me go ahead and stitch these so they don't fall apart. Now don't worry how neat they are and if they don't come out perfectly even or something like that. This is going to be sticking out the side of the bag and we're gonna trim it up a little bit anyways. You just wanna stay close to the end, like I said, about an eighth of an inch. So I'm gonna go ahead and set these over on my sewing machine until the next step. Now we're gonna go ahead and get our fabric ready for our zipper. I have my outside fabric right side up. I wanna take my zipper and with the pull to the left, I wanna put it right sides down. So that is the zipper plastic part here. I don't use metal zippers. If you were to use a metal zipper, you'd want it to be the exact right size. I prefer the plastic nylon ones so that I can trim them up. This would be a little bit harder to do this way if you had a metal one. So I go ahead and I put them down right sides together. I'm gonna go ahead and put a couple of these little clips on here just to hold it in place for me. Now, if you're new to sewing, you can go ahead and take this to your sewing machine, put in your zipper foot and stitch this down about a quarter of an inch from the edge. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and put my lining so that it's right sides down. I wanna match it up on the sides and I wanna match it up at the top so everything's nice and even. If you want, you can put a couple pins in it or you can just go ahead and add some clips down to the side here. This will hold it in place while you're moving it around. And then I'm gonna take it over to my sewing machine and I'm gonna go ahead and do my zipper stitching down about a quarter of an inch from this edge. I'm using black thread so it's a little hard to see, but I've gone ahead and top stitch that. So we're gonna lay this back down on the table with our fabric right side up. We're going to take this piece of fabric from the bottom end and we wanna bring it up to the top of our zipper. And we wanna make sure that we are lining it up on the sides here so that everything matches. Give it a little clippy. Do the same thing on this side. Line it up at the top. One more in the center. Okay, you see how we have it like that? That's why we have one long piece. We're not gonna have any seam in the bottom of our bag. And I think that's really nice on a small bag like this not to have any seams at all. And then we're gonna put it, flip it over so that it's the lining side up and we're gonna do right sides together. Once again, making sure we line it up with our lining, with the top of the zipper. And now we have all three pieces clipped together with the zipper in the center. Back over to the sewing machine, stitch it a quarter of an inch from the edge. And we have both pieces sandwiched in between there again. Now I want to go ahead and take my zipper and slide it down. 
I'm not using an adjustable zipper, so mine has a stopper on it. If you use that zipper on a roll stuff, you might want to put some a couple of stitches right here so that your zipper just doesn't come flying off because then you'd have to put it back on and it's annoying. So I have a stopper on mine, a metal stopper, so I can go ahead and do that. I want to open this up, take this over to my iron, and once again, press it so that my lining is pushed down nice and neat and I have that nice edge here. And this is the part that gets a little bit tricky where we're gonna go ahead and top stitch along here. Now I have a moderate zipper. Mine isn't very much longer. If you had a much longer zipper, you'd be able to do this a lot easier. It's a little bit fiddly for me at this length. I think I'm using an eight or nine inch zipper, but I'm gonna be able to do it easily. I did it on the other one. It just take a little patience and go slow. So let me give this a good press. I know this is a little bit hard to see, especially with the green fabric, but I'm gonna make sure that everything is lined up. I'm gonna go ahead and put a couple clips in just to hold the part down here, my lining to my outer fabric, just so I don't have any issues of things moving around on me. I still have my zipper foot in and I just want to go about an eighth of an inch down, top stitch across here. It's gonna get a little bit crazy when we get towards the end, but it'll be okay. We're just gonna go slow. Just kind of hold it so that everything is staying in a spot and I'm not getting this top fabric coming up higher up on my zipper. And I just go nice and steady and slow. This is just like anywhere else at the beginning. And now we get to the end, I'm just gonna hold all my fabric up like this with the zipper so that my zipper foot can come right into this little bit of space that I have here. I have about an inch or so extra zipper that I can just go ahead and tuck my foot into. You just, it's like I said, it's fiddly. You just hold this bit out of the way, hold the fabric down, keep this zipper down, and just go nice and slow. Just be careful of your fingers and watch out for that little screw over here on my machine that goes up and down. I've smashed my finger with that many times. And there you go, all top stitched on both sides now. And I didn't lose a finger. Now while I'm right here at the machine, I have this zipper end that's wide open because I need to keep my zipper halfway open when I go ahead and flip everything out. So I wanna take this part and I wanna lay it down and I want, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a little tacking stitch across the zipper, but I'm gonna do it outside of all of my fabric here. So I'm not going through any of the fabric, I'm just going through the zipper. Put a row in there just to hold it together, back stitch once or twice. Doesn't have to be exactly perfect. And we're going to trim off this end afterwards anyway, so that part won't matter. So there I have it nice and stitched on there, just to keep this from flopping. When this is flopping around everywhere, it just gets annoying. And I'm also going to go ahead and stitch my little findings and my tabs and stuff. Now, on the end where the zipper stopper is, I'm gonna tuck in the one that does not have the clip on. And I wanna have the loop, the folded part, go inside. You see I'm only going through right here where my, my outer fabric is in this little tunnel. And I'm just gonna tack this down now so that when I go ahead and stitch everything later, it's gonna be less things that I have to try to hold together and clip together. I'm keeping that stitching line from where I stitched it down to hold the pieces together. I'm keeping that on the outside now, I know it's going to be a little hard to see here, but what I'm doing is keeping that stitching line past my fabric. I'm lining it up so that it's centered on my zipper. And then I'm just going to go ahead and tack it down with a couple stitches. Just one row is really all it needs. You can go right over the stitching line you already did or go between that and the edge of it, the end. Now, once again, if you had a metal zipper, you wouldn't be able to stitch through it like this. And then on this side, I'm going to do the same thing, and I'm going to put my little swivel clip inside. Center it on the zipper. And then just tack it down past all the fabrics. 
So you can go ahead and tack it on top of the stitching you put on the end and on top of or close to the tacking stitches you put down to hold your zipper in place. I'm going to take my two pieces of lining fabric right sides together. Put a little piece of waist fabric down here to stitch onto first. And then a quarter inch seam. I want to leave a couple inch, uh, about a two inch opening here to turn the pouch around. Starting off on this little piece that I've always called a spider because of all the pieces of threads coming off like the legs on a spider. It's just a piece of scrap fabric that I folded in half and it just stops me from getting a mess of a nest of thread when I start off on these really thin fabrics. And I can just keep using this over and over again until it's completely full of thread. So here is what our pouch is looking like. I want to take my zipper, make sure that it is past the halfway part on the open. So I have it all the way down to here, so that's good. I'm going to take my lining, because it has a seam going straight down the center, and I'm going to line it up with the center of the zipper, right where the little zipper part is there. And I'm going to take this outer fabric and I want to bring it down so that the sides match up. And if I do that, then that's going to mean that the zipper is centered on there also. Or you can go ahead and bring it down like this, fold it and give it a little bit of a, a little bit of a smushy crease there. Line it up, line up that fold. If your sides line up, then everything's going to line up. And once again, I'm giving a little smushy crease there just to hold it in place. I will put some clips on it. Spin it around, and I'm going to do the same thing on this side. I'm going to line that up halfway. Make sure my little swivel hook is on the inside. He decided to jump ship there. Things lined up nicely. Now I'm going to take this over to my sewing machine and I'm going to go ahead and stitch a, you can do a quarter inch seam over here and over here. I like to go a little bit larger and do a three eighths. That way I know I've caught everything in there. There is nothing that's going to be missed because sometimes when I do it, I might not have my lining and my outer fabric lined up exactly perfect when I was putting my zipper in. And that just makes sure that I get everything in there and everybody's caught. Okay, everything here on this end is sealed up. This end is sealed up. I have my turning opening right here in my lining. It is a little bit small. It is a little bit, once again, that word I say a lot, fiddly, but it is a small pouch, so it's going to be a small opening. I'm gonna go ahead and trim off a little bit of this extra. I'm going to go ahead, since I did the 3 8 seam, I'm gonna bring it down to about a quarter inch. I'm going to slowly go through my zipper Sometimes I like to flip it over and then come at it from the other side. Just so my scissors, as I'm going through, don't go crazy and veer off and slip, slip and slide into my pouch there. And that's just because we have not only the zipper tape and we have all our folded up piece from our little tabs that we do, our little pull tabs. I trim up this side also. When I was stitching it, I was very careful to make sure that I could feel where my little swivel clasp is and made sure it didn't come over and try to sneak its way out because that would have been really bad news for the sewing machine. And you could have shot your eye out, right? Okay, everything's all trimmed up nice and neat. I'm gonna go ahead and peek into this pouch. 
I'm going to go all the way through to my line, my actual outer fabric here. Pull out that little swivel hook. I want to make sure my outer fabric is on the outside and my lining fabric is on the inside. I'm not going to be too concerned about my corners for right now because what I want to do is I want to flip and turn this so that my lining is on the outside. And I want to poke these corners out. I know this seems a little strange, but we're going to go ahead and box these corners. So you have everything nice and neat. I went ahead and closed up the zipper just a little bit. I can still easily get my fingers in there and push it open just to get it away from these corners here. Now I'm gonna go take this over and give these edges a nice good press and it's gonna help me line up my corners to go ahead and box them. Now if you didn't wanna box your corners, you can go ahead and just have a flat pouch like this. Of course, with your outside, you'd wanna turn it the right way out. And you can just have a flat pouch that you zipper up, but we're gonna go ahead and box our corners. I have a little ruler and I have a friction pen. This way it's not gonna show and when I go ahead and press it, it's gonna go ahead and disappear. So any type of tool that you have, marking tool that will disappear, it'll work fine here. I press this edge because I wanna line this edge up with this edge. So I'm gonna pop this corner out line up this pressed edge with this seam here. Make sure everything is nice and flat in the center and there's no, your outer fabric hasn't done anything weird and shifted over. Let's get you guys zoomed in nice here. So what I do is I take my ruler and I wanna have it about a half inch down from the tip and I want my line to be one inches long. So I'm gonna line up my two and three inch here. It just happens to be that you can line it up with your four and your five or your one and the two. And you wanna have it so that the, the first marking for the one inch, which is my two, is on the edge and then my three is on the edge. And I can go ahead and move it up and down as I need to, to where that my line is gonna be one inches across. And then I'll just go ahead and draw my line. And I like to put a clip on it just to hold it so nothing shifts between here and the sewing machine. Let's do that again. We're gonna match our outer seam with that little fold that we put in there. That way everything lines up and we don't have it all weird and crooked. Let's keep all the extra stuff out of the way. I'm going to line up my ruler and make it so that the, let's do the four and five this time. So that the four inch mark is on one edge, the five inch mark is on the other. It's about a half an inch, give or take a smidge. Put a clip on it. Then I'm going to take it to my sewing machine after I've done all four corners and I'm just going to go ahead and stitch across this line. I'm going to back stitch at the start and the end just so it doesn't come loose and I'll show you what it looks like. My corners are all stitched and after I did two of them, I realized I probably should have changed my thread from black to a lighter color, but that's okay. They're gonna be on the inside. This is a pouch for me, so it'll be fine. I'm gonna turn everything right side out. I'm just gonna use my fingers to pop these corners. You could take this over and you could press all of these edges to make it look all nice and neat. And there I have a little teeny tiny itsy bitsy teeny weeny boxy pouch. Now the only thing left to worry about is the inside. We do have to close up this hole in the lining. Now on this one, I took it over to the machine and I machine stitched it. And you see how it leaves that visible ridge right there? Now if you're gonna be putting some change in it or giving it to the kids to put a mask in or to put their lunch money in, or you can put chapstick, whatever you happen to need, it would be nice for an inhaler. So if you have someone who asthmatic, they need an inhaler, that would work for there really nicely. They're not gonna really see that. Or you can take it and just go ahead and do the little ladder stitch and close it up by hand. I'll probably close this one up by hand because it's such a tiny little spot and it's nice not to have that little ridge. Plus, I would have to find a matching thread because black would really show in the center. 
Now you can see our corners. I did not trim these off at all. I'm just going to let them sit in there. It's going to help give a little bit of structure to those corners and keep them all nice and neat. And that way I don't have to worry about raw edges, nor would I have to put little binding strips on it to hide those raw edges. Let's go ahead and put my mask in there. Add my little zipper pull. You could put a ribbon or you could put some yarn, embroidery floss on here. Just happen to have this cute little hanger that was sent to me. And you can use that as your zipper pull. And if you do put money in it, since we put it up at the top like this, it's going to hang like that. So if it gets pulled at all or if it opens, all your money won't come falling out at the bottom. Now, what if this is just a little bit too much for one of your younger children to put it in? Even though it's a little bit bigger than the original, it's still not very big. You could make a larger boxy pouch. Or I have these in my shop. These are those triangle pouches. You can easily put a mask into this one. You can store a couple masks in it and use this as your fresh mask container and have a separate one for dirty ones. So you can just go ahead and lay them in there and stack them up like they did in those. This reminds me of those diaper stackers, but of course much smaller. So you can go ahead and stack some masks in there so that your kids have several to use each day. Because we know the kids, as they go back to school and they have to wear a mask all day, chances are they're going to lose some. They're going to get them mixed up somewhere. They're going to leave them at school so you won't have them at home to wash them. So you're going to need some extra ones. Or you could simply just make them one of these little simple zipper pouches. Once again, this one is listed in the shop. If you make it yourself, you can go ahead and put a waterproof liner in it. Or you can just go ahead and use this only for clean masks and have a different one for dirty ones. And then you can just wash whatever the dirty ones are. So there's a variety of fun ways to go ahead and store your masks and keep them in the backpack so it's easy for you to find and easy for your kids to find. I hope you enjoyed making this little itty bitty teeny tiny boxy zipper pouch that can go on a keychain or a backpack. If you have any questions, please leave them down below in the comments. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye.